长长讲，明白members only live stream for some time after the launch happens uh and i think i think i have done that so let's have a look at您三号讲，明白。您九号讲，明白。零八号讲，明白
行七号讲，行办。各号注意，我是林浩，收集三十分钟准备情况。神舟，神舟十二号，先锋长征奖，行办。各号注意，我是林浩，十五分钟准备。东风，东风明白。长征，神舟。各号注意，神舟十二号。我是东风。十五分钟准备。右路的东风，雪山。先锋，华山，明白。
And uh, earlier, I have, I have investigated some of this uh, private company. Uh, e uh, there was many uh, companies right there. And also, I think the, the company that uh, Mr. Yang, you work for, have already got this, uh, the, the commercial black gift, right? Uh, I come from a state com uh, company. Yeah, I am yeah. a satellite maker. I launched one of my satellites with a private company. Uh, they provide the launch services. Even the Oh, okay. All the ground staff are called to withdraw from the launch pad. You heard the command from the control center. All the ground staff yes. needs to be evacuated right now, indicating uh, it's a go for the launch. Things yes. are entering the final stages. So you can see almost all the rotational platform has been opened, so no need for the ground staff there. So they, they, they will mm -hmm. leave. Mm -hmm. But still, the, um, as I mentioned, the, uh, some arms are connected to the vehicle with the cables and the pipes to have the uh, telemetry and uh, mirroring uh, signals uh, from the vehicle. There you see the bus taking the ground staff away from the launch tower. Uh, they will retreat to safe zone, I guess, at least 1.5 kilometers away from the launch pad. Yes. Uh, well, last time the, in Wenchang, when the China launches a core module, we see a lot of this, uh, the ordinary people who comes to the beach to, to yeah. watch this yeah. uh, the, the launching yeah. event. What about this time? Is, uh, can the ordinary yeah. people come to Zhou to, to watch this? Yes, yes. I, I've seen some posts on the uh, social media in China. Some of the uh, private companies organize uh, tourists oh, to the watch tour, the launch. The tour. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but you can s speculate from a distance away, about a few kilometers. Yeah. yeah. You have mentioned the commercial or the private companies. It is very interesting that all the orbital launches attempt also perform in this Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. Mm -hmm. uh, two of them, including the Beijing Interstellar Glory and uh, the, uh, the uh, Galactic Energy, uh, performed their orbital launches successfully in China. So we now have two private companies which can provide these orbital launch services. All right, 12 minutes to go till launch. And talk about China's the, the private space market, and I also realized that it was not just for the the rocket, but also for satellites. The satellites is the big there parts more. of the the mar market, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are more companies engaged in uh, making satellites. You know, that's for uh, launch services is really uh, relative complex. Uh, not only you can have the you should have the ability to making the launch vehicles, but also there are many security issues. For instance, we discussed about the, the falling area of the substages. Uh, we must uh, dealing with these kind of issues. So this is more complex, and for the uh, for the satellites is uh, relatively uh, easier. Especially you know that many universities in China has already have their own satellites. Uh, some are even for the educational purposes. Even it's very interesting that there is a. Uh, uh, some uh, sci uh, science outreach, science publication uh, satellites made by uh, high school students. Mm. So this is also very interesting. Mm -hmm. And yeah. will there be joint flights? Since you mentioned uh, the commercial use of uh, space flights, will there be joint flights of Chinese and foreign astronauts in the near future? Uh, it is quite possible. During the announcement yesterday, the China Manned Space Agency, Mr. Qi okay. has mentioned uh, the foreign astronauts are trained in China. Serious people, I can still remember that Ms. Thamansha, uh, Christopher Ferretti, uh, were trained in Qingdao in the rescue training. Uh, and our astronaut Ye Guangfu also were trained in Europe in the cave, uh, cave training. So uh, we have cooperations and in the future I believe that sooner or later we can see the foreign astronauts taking the Shenzhou spaceship to our station. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was the big countdown clock on the screen you just saw there saying a scheduled liftoff. Uh, we're less than 10 minutes away. You're seeing that huge rocket Long March 2F right there, still attaching uh, to the umbilical tower. And those umbilical cords are expected to be detached um, seconds, 40 seconds to 50 seconds ahead of yeah. launch. So China's space station program has been uh has to involve so many partners from the uh, the international community, including the Europe, Europe Space Agency. And can, can you just tell yes. us how we cooperated? Uh, what what fields uh, we cooperated? Uh, we have a close cooperation with Russia before. Russia. Our astronauts were trained in Russia during the 1990s. 
So I just yeah, want to yeah. translate this uh, yeah. to our viewers. Yeah, there you see yeah, the monitoring yeah. screen. Yeah. The temperature yeah. is 23.6 degrees yeah. Celsius. Yeah. The wind direction yeah. is 2.2 yeah. meters per second. Yeah. And there's also the visibility and humidity monitoring status there. The commander has announced the accurate launch time because the launch time is determined by the orbit of our Tianhe module. Mm -hmm. And it's down to seconds, right? The launch time, exact launch time is 9.22. 27 seconds. Exactly. The sky's clear today. A good it's day for a good lunch. day for lunch. And just show on the big screen in the uh, control uh, control center that the wind speed is uh, 2.7 meters. Not a very high speed, just a fit for launch. And also the uh, the air uh, around the Jiuquan uh, Satellite Launch Center is very clear. You can visibility can reach to 30 kilometers. Mm -hmm. uh, very good condition. condition. Mm -hmm. If we are lucky enough, maybe we can see uh, from the uh, telescope, uh, which can record the separation between the first stage and the second stage. Mm -hmm. We should be able to see the, the strap-on boosters uh, released uh, from the ground. Yes. If we have a clear sky. See a bit of, bit of cloud, but uh, should be able to, visit, uh, should be able to uh, see it on visible sites, the separation of the strap-on boosters. And an escape tower has been activated about five minutes before, uh, before the launch. Uh, it's even longer. It's a little longer uh, because you know that at this moment, uh, if anything wrong happened, the emergency escape will work. Will work. Well, so once the astronauts are in the capsule and the hatch is closed, then the escape tower is armed. Are armed. So they're ready to go. You know, shooting. See, anytime. Yeah. Yeah. We're standing by. There should be a, safe, a safety plan at, at any minute, uh, yes. all the way to the station. Many years before, during the development of the Shenzhou spaceship, uh, Mr. Yuan Jiajun, who is also a former leader of China Man Space Program, yeah. mentioned that the first important uh, test is the uh, zero altitude escape uh, test. Uh, which uh, launched, uh, which initiated, uh, ignited the emergency mm. escape tower from the uh, zero, zero, uh, from, from the, uh, from the ground. Zero from the ground. From, from the ground. this position, yes. Yeah. And that went well. That was successful. Uh, that was successful. But the escape tower is, is not going to come all the way down to, uh, to orbit. So the, right? uh, if the launch goes uh, smoothly, the first uh, critical action after the pitch over will be the jettisoning of the. Uh, is escape tower mm -hmm. oh. uh, because in a certain attitude the uh, the aerodynamic forces will be uh, smaller than the uh, lift off uh, in the low attitude so no need for the escape tower then uh, in a certain area uh, in a certain period uh, will depend on the escape engines on the payload fairing mm -hmm. and after that if the after fairing is jettisoned so it's already in the almost vacuum condition and if anything wrong happened the, the spaceship can use its own engines to leave the launch vehicle. So is this escape tower is going to be ejected even before the booster? Before the fairing. Uh, be, uh, be, uh, actually, it is the before first the separation. Booster, yes. yeah. so uh, the first, the first separation the will be the jettisoning of the uh, escape tower. Uh, happened about uh, two minutes mm -hmm. after the launch. We mm -hmm. will see that in just a few moments. We're getting really close, a little more than five minutes to go to uh, the final liftoff. The astronauts are still, um, I think they're still watching no. their flight manuals. They're reading, reading their flight manuals. Mm -hmm. They just need to repeat that again and again. I wonder how they feel at this moment. I mean, uh, going into space would be the lifetime dream for every astronaut, right? I guess there, there will be boundless joy for is there any other instrument that uh, that has been connected on those uh, on the body yes, yes. of those astronauts? Exactly. Who uh, so uh, they will monitoring the the parameter, their biological parameters of their body. Uh, it so will be see also heart rates, respiratory yeah, 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 yeah. status. Yeah. Ah. If uh, if they, uh, if they don't uh, if feel not better, we can stop the whole procedure to deal with that. In well, fact, some we monitor this all the time. Yeah. That's right. The figure. T minus five minutes. But from our early, earlier experience, those the figure can show that all of those astronauts have been well trained and they, they can keep pretty calm. 
even before the lunch. Usually mm -hmm. they are very, very calm during mm -hmm. the lunch. They're really even calm. Even during any emergencies. That's right. Life-threatening emergencies. They're you trained see, they for They were that. still very relaxed in their postures. And, yeah. and now they're getting ready for the launching position. So mm -hmm. they have folded their legs to the to their appropriate position. So <laughs> even five minutes before, they were still, you know, like relaxing. Mm -hmm. That's right. Checking their seat belts. Yeah. Checking so their knee guards. They're gonna put down everything and ready for the launch uh, in two or three minutes. Mm -hmm. And we're getting really close. That's the live image from the control center at the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. There you see Vice Premier Han Zheng watching uh, this launch among the audience. This is a live picture coming from the Beijing Aerospace City. Vice Premier Han Zheng among other senior leaders and officials. There you see uh, Central Military Vice Chairman of the Central Military Chief there. That was Zhang Youxia that you just saw there. So these are top, top level officials. They're watching. Uh, that really speaks about speaks volume about how important uh, Beijing sees this mission. And it we just realized yeah. Yeah. it's a good location and a good timing for celebrating the party's hundred years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a moment of pride too. This is Xu Qiliang, uh, the other vice chairman of Central Military Commission. He is watching this launch very closely at the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center among other leaders. So we've got two groups of high-level leaders watching this launch from Beijing and also at Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. All right, three minutes uh, to go till launch. And it's interesting, it's usually quiet at the launch control around this time as we're getting close to time zero, not much uh, calm going on there except for a few simple commands and the final countdown and that's because the final status checks by now has all been completed and that's a good sign you don't want to hear too much noise yeah they have a, a set of code of conduct is already uh, undergoing uh, so everything went well so they're every being uh, being quiet if, the, mm -hmm. uh, if anyone raised a voice that means uh, there's an ab anomaly I believe at this moment the uh, electrical uh, supply has already transferred from ground to the interior batteries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two minutes to go. A nerve-wracking moment. I mean, for the flight crew, for the whole launch team, and for all of us who are watching. As much as this is a moment for excitement, it's also a moment for anxiety, isn't it? And also, the launching schedule is really tied for the China Space Station uh, program and. Yeah, we we, we witnessed year. the first core module launch in the end of the April, and we saw the cargo ship yeah. just uh, launch to this uh, the orbit just following mm -hmm. maybe it's a few weeks later. Even mm -hmm. the cargo ship was delayed, delayed, delayed but mm -hmm. uh, was uh, successfully launched yeah. into space. Right. Yeah. And right now, for the astronauts who are waiting there for launch, there's really not much uh, they can do for this period of time. They're strapped in, things are out of their hands. They're relying on their team to get them out there safely. Yeah. They receive the crew of Shenzhou 12 mission in the middle, uh, Nie Haisheng, the flight commander, and alongside with him uh, are the flight engineers, Liu, Liu Guoming and Tang Yes. All right, that's the call out, T minus 60 seconds. An incredible moment to witness. A truly see majestic the view. Are ready in their ready position. Yeah, yeah. They're ready. Yeah, and soon we're going to see the umbilicals being detached. That's going to happen uh, from any moment from now. The arms will be finally they are uh, detached. See the retractable arm has been rolled back. Wow. The historic moments is coming. Mm -hmm. And uh, 30 seconds till launch. The first crew Crewed mission destined for Tiangong China Space Station on board the Shenzhou 12 spacecraft. 20 seconds, less than 20 seconds to go. And the Shenzhou 12 will be uh, Nia Haishun's third space out. That's right. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ignition. There's a booster coming in. 
and lift off. Lift off. Just spectacular. The launch at Zhengzhou 12 spacecraft heading to the Chinese space station. The divine vessel shipping away from its spaceport. Its destination, the heavenly palace. Three astronauts on board the Shenzhou 12 spacecraft will be fair to the core module of China's space station. And of course, you're hearing the voices from the launch team providing tracking status, saying things are going good. That's the sound we'd like to hear. We have different ground tracking stations. Okay, it's pitch over. Change its direction of flight. All right. And wow, that's the view of the site boosters. You're looking yeah. down at the tail of the rocket. This is a camera on the camera. second stage. Major event coming up is the separation of the escape tower, right? That's going to happen yes. about two minutes into the flight. Two minutes. And because the sky today is really clear, so we have a beautiful view. Clear of the, visual. Yeah, we can have the clear visual of the rockets coming and the launching off to the, into the sky and right the That's astronauts they look fine to me they look okay yeah and yeah. keep in mind the rocket has four side boosters those are the two out of the four you're watching there so is that is that supposed to be the period that the, the astronauts feel very uncomfortable uh yes it's that's speeding the up. very it's speeding very up. beginning period yes. they are already experiencing the g-load yeah all right when uh, when we'll see peak g-load uh, the separation before the first stage. Okay, so right. we're not it's there not yet. yet. Yeah, the forces are increasing. The first thing, first thing would be the separation of the strap on boosters. Yeah. No. Oh, the oh, first one will be the setting on the tower. emergency escape tower. If everything goes oh. right, we're going to see the escape Seven tower seconds. jettison. Uh, we in won't a few be able moments. to see it on on the camera because this camera was looking down to the strap on boosters. Oh, uh, that's the that's 3D animation. Yeah. That animation is based on yeah, real-time time. Okay, yeah. uh, that's, that's the separation of the escape tower that we just saw there. And you heard the call out. That's the infrared image. Uh, 150 image. seconds will be the separation of the four boosters. Yeah. A great infrared image showing you a successful separation of the escape tower. Really indicating uh, the low-level flight, the initial stage of the flight went well. That's in fact an uh, infrared uh, camera that is looking at the rocket itself. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is the video. Again, the site is coming up next. Yeah. Booster separation. Yeah, booster separation. Yep. And first stage of... Yeah. Wow. Great. There you see uh, separation. the booster separation. The four boost side booster has been separated mm -hmm. from the core stage. Yep. And the first stage rocket Beautiful. separation. You see the five bright dots? Those yeah, are the right. four Beautiful. side boosters and the uh, one and stage the one stage. rocket. The, the first stage is also four already separated. Mm -hmm. So now the astronauts should be feeling really comfortable. And they're, they're making some movement, you can see. Oh, right. they're waving to the camera. Yeah. I'm and telling the, next, the team they're uh, okay. The operation will be just jettisoning of the mm -hmm. payload fairings. I think that's the image uh, of the stage two rocket engine. Exactly. The so camera mounted on, uh, towards the back, backward. Right. Coming up next is the shutdown of the stage two rocket engine. And there is only one main, main engine for the Only one main engine. Okay. And the four that's the view Vernier engines. of the one spacecraft, main engine right? And that's the form of Vernier engines. Mm -hmm. Vernier engines is to uh, taking, uh, control the attitude. All right. Yeah, that's the, the jettison of the yeah, fairing. Yeah, yeah. That's the solar panel you're seeing. Which module is that? Is that the orbital Se module, uh, service uh, module, uh, service module? Is it, it is uh, separation of the payload fairings. Mm -hmm. the, the fairing covers the service module as well as the capsule. The camera, as you mentioned, is mounted on the uh, on, on, on the, the propulsion module. There you can see the Earth from the yes. camera yeah. on the spacecraft. Well, we can already the ellipse of the Earth. Great visual. Beautiful. Uh, so a series of fast maneuvers and status reports there. Um, so 926 a.m. Beijing time here, about uh, four minutes into the flight. Everything continues to look good. They should be already 100 kilometers above Earth already. Yeah. Wow, it's incredible to hear how fast the rocket is. The whole process that before they, they are hitting the orbit, it just needs like 10 minutes. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, 580 seconds or so. Yeah, roughly 10 minutes. Yeah. Roughly and the next uh, critical step will be the shutdown of the main engine. Mm -hmm. And then it will work on the four vernier engines. Vernier engines can rotate in different directions to control the attitude. And mm -hmm. finally, and can adjust the orbit to be accurate enough. So this engine you're seeing from the screen is very important because it has a, to have a, a surgical position of when to shut down 
to eject that uh, spacecraft into the precise altitude yeah. and uh, position to catch up with the station. Mm -hmm. And what's it like to endure uh, so many G-forces? I guess uh, we are going to hit the time when the crew will feel maximum G-forces before the second stage rocket uh, shut down? They've already passed the most uh, inconvenient uh, period. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it already. Because the, the thrust of the second stage is not very large. Okay. Uh, only one engine, one main engine. Uh, just uh, before the separation. And we really did, didn't notice much difference uh, from their facial expression, from their body gesture. Mm -hmm. I guess they're, they've been trained to endure uh, such yeah. pressure. We can see from the left uh, screen that uh, shows the uh, data animations. link between mm -hmm. the ground station and the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that animation is based on real time telemetry, it's not a pre made video. It's really showing you what's yes. going on in real time. This is the real camera. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you can see the, the sky become dark because it's already in outer space. Mm -hmm. It's black, pitch black. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The, the <coughs> bright part is the Earth, is the yeah. horizon of the Earth, and very there are bright. numerous cameras on this vehicle and they have light on it to illuminate the rocket so that everything shows up on camera and engineers can take a look at them just in case of a problem of, or anything. Uh, because it's already in uh, almost a vacuum condition, so the vibration is not so intensive than the mm -hmm. initial stage. Mm -hmm. So this engine, this uh, the second stage engine, with with has been designed for just one main engine and four extra engines. This this kind of design was was specially was, desi was specially um, designed for the the precise orbit entering. Uh, it comes from the original design of the Long March 2 mm -hmm. rocket. Mm -hmm. uh, so we saved a lot of money by using the same engine on the first and the second stage, just a different mm -hmm. configuration uh, with vacuum condition. Uh, but still we need the four vernier engines. Vernier engine is much smaller than the main engine, but uh, with these engines we can have an accurate chance on the orbit. It's almost 9.30 a.m. We are almost about 8 minutes into the flight and keep in mind that this is China's first crewed mission since 2016, nearly five years ago. It's also China's seventh crewed space flight overall in the past 18 years. Uh, ground tracking staff are saying everything is normal, is going nominal. You just saw some bright uh, orange flame there. The main engine is shut down. Shut down. Now it's been shut down. Another critical step being completed. So now those astronauts now they're floating. Oh, they're now floating. They're floating so now they're supposed to feel more comfortable. They do look like they're a bit more at ease now. They're looking at their flat manual. We can hear from the voice that uh, shows that the USB, the tracking, uh, the radio tracking, and also the optical uh, cam cameras tracking very normal. Mm -hmm. So the vernier engine, the four vernier engines, is still working to adjust its orbit very yeah. accurately. Yeah, and they're looking out at the window. You can see the yeah. light from the yeah, window. Yeah, yeah, this is a camera on, board, uh, uh, on the propulsion module. Okay. You can see the, uh, the folded panels. panels, the, four, uh, pan uh, the mm -hmm. four pieces of panels on one side. Mm -hmm. And coming up next will be the spacecraft separation. Exactly, after the shutdown of the four vernier engines. So in fact, they're fine tuning their uh, attitude yes. and make sure that it's facing in the right directions okay. before they shut down and separate the, uh, the engine. Yeah. You're in a separa the separation in near the eastern coast of Shandong province. Mm -hmm. How this uh, spacecraft is gonna, um, gonna find the, the Tampa core module in the space? I mean, there's nothing that you can use to... Well, there are so many things. I mean, uh, there are signals that uh, transmitting to each other. There are navigation systems. Mm -hmm. There are Beidou that are communicating, and their ground crews are supporting. Mm -hmm. So this time, the astronaut doesn't have to do too much. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's going to be automatic, uh, uh, fast, uh, fast connection. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. The robotic just take uh, care of everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Shenzhou 12 mission, once again, will last about three months in space, the longest day in space to date by Chinese astronauts. Oh, separation. All right, you see the great uh, the separation of spacecraft. The great. second stage is drifting away. That's right. So the next uh, critical step will be the unfolding of the uh, solar panels. Solar panels.
So once the separation is done, the uh, the capsule and the service module has to adjust its own uh, at, at attitude. Yeah. And you can see the spacecraft, uh, the full view of the spacecraft from that 3D animation, right? You can see the returning capsule in the middle, mm -hmm. and then uh, the orbiting module and the service module. Another great view wow. of the Earth. That's just the, yeah. Yeah. This is a video from the camera mounted on your spacecraft. Mm -hmm. As we're just standing by for the deployment of uh, solar panels. Look at our home. Uh, our the, re Earth. the voice says that the data link between the vehicle and the uh, uh, data relay satellite has yeah, been established. Yeah, you can see that the pin is floating. Yeah. Wow. If you, They're if you tossing look at things the, around. Yeah. yeah, look inside this. They are just the enjoying the microgravity now. Uh -huh. I think the astronauts are just showing off to us. <laughs> there, are, there's one first timer. Oh, yeah. they just won't let us know. Yeah. Uh, this is the first time for Hongbo. I tell you that. First time for Hongbo, so it's gonna be an exciting journey. All right. So this is the, the Shenzhou 12 mission, and this mission will involve a series of technical verification tasks uh, related to the performance of function of the Tianhe quarter module. It will include extravehicular activity using EVA suits uh, delivered by Tianzhou 2, the cargo ship, and the verification of the regenerative life support system. So everything's going to happen after six or seven hours later, right? After they docked yeah, yeah, with yeah, the exactly. Tampa Boring module. And you can see the movement of the blue earth around the spacecraft. Yeah. So it's Just really moving amazing. Great picture here. That's right. Uh, the voice uh, tell there us. There you see the deployment of solar panels. Now the solar panel is yeah. unfolding. Unfolded. Ah, Great. major tearings. Uh, Normally for satellite uh, launch, this would be the success signal. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. So at this there moment, the, the spacecraft has continuous power supply. That was, oh, this is the Jiaquan satellite launch center. The image earlier was from Beijing. This is the Jiaquan satellite launch center once again. So the guys who's responsible for rockets are relaxed. Mm -hmm. Their job is done. So now yeah. it's up to the life support system. <laughs> <laughs> That's also a relay race, right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And this is from Beijing Aerospace City. And it's a spacecraft right now in, in the same orbit of yeah, the, it's the same Yeah, it's the same altitude, but they need to have final adjustment so that they can catch up uh, with them. Uh, uh, at this moment, the Shenzhou 12 is in the same orbital plane of the Tianhe 1, but with a different altitude. Usually the apogee is 200 kilometers, and the, uh, sorry, the perigee is 200 kilometers, and the apogee depends on the, uh, on the control, and usually more than uh, 300 kilometers high. Up until now, everything is going well, but we don't want to call it too early. We are standing by for an official announcement from the launch team that's going to happen any moment from now. We should confirm, as we already heard the voice, that the, the initial orbit parameters has been sended to the ground stations. Mm -hmm. But we still uh, need to verify and check in the accurate orbital parameters. Mm -hmm. uh, because you know that these uh, orbital parameters must be accurate enough mm -hmm. to ensure that it can have the chance to dock with the station. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So only in this moment we can announce the success of the launch. So Not only launch into orbit, but still need to be accurate enough. So lots of calculations mm. there going if on. If it is not ground. accurate, it will uh, waste a lot of propellants. So maybe not make it impossible to dock with the station. Mm -hmm. So it will be uh, taking a few burns before we mm -hmm. catch up. So it's going to be okay. using the uh, apogee and perigee as well as the inclination uh, to catch up with the station. So at the precise point, it will burn the engine to lift the uh, altitude of the uh, Shenzhou, mm -hmm. so it can have a precise alignment with the, with the, uh, with the Tianhe. Mm -hmm. Usually we have uh, uh, five to six orbit maneuvers before uh, talking with the station. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and it will be done uh, automatically. Oh, the, manu the, maneuver, the orbit uh, maneuver will be... So this, uh, the, the ground staff will be more relaxed because mm -hmm. it will be done by the vehicle itself. Oh. But also the astronaut could, to, could kick in to uh, maneuver like that. No, this will be not because, you know, that's, it will be uh, calculated in the onboard computers, not by the astronauts. Mm -hmm. Only in some emergency cases, the astronaut can do something. Oh, they are... Oh, they're waving hands okay. to us. Comments. Hello! They're waving to cameras! Well, a way of telling our uh, team there uh, they're okay. And another way of saying thank you. Yes, just now we have just heard that the capsule itself has a good environment to, yeah. to open the, ha the, the helmet. That is perfect. So uh, this means that for the, fir for the third time, Mr. Nian Haisheng visited the outer space. Yeah. Yeah. He became yeah. the second astronaut in China just after Jing Haipeng mm -hmm. who have achieved the three missions. Three missions. Battery. Impressive. And, and we're about to 16 battery. minutes into the flight. So the person who stays in space for the longest period of time, that would be his, yeah, his you record. Can, you can see Tang Hongbo and Liu Boming who are sitting beside the window They're looking out. They're watching out, out yeah. through the window. Enjoying, take it all in. <laughs> the majestic view. As I mentioned, the, it is the most <laughs> favorite scene uh, the, of the astronauts. Yes. Just enjoy the view of the Earth. Mm -hmm. And it seems the solar panels are working properly. <laughs> Oh, you can actually hear the astronauts yes. talking to each other. They're talking about the velocity, 7.8, 7.9. Yeah. That means kilometers per second. Mm -hmm. They're looking at their own speed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We heard that the initial orbit, the perigee is 200 kilometers, mm -hmm. and the apogee is uh, 345 kilometers, which means that it's a little bit lower than the uh, than our station. Uh, this also means, as uh, uh, Yan has mentioned, mm -hmm. it will circle in the Earth faster mm -hmm. than the Tiangong. Uh, Tianhe, and it can act as a chasing vehicle. Uh, to with move, with to several move orbits, with, it can go closer to the station. So after they close to within the distance of uh, 52 kilometers, uh, the long, uh, long distance uh, guidance will be ended. And then they will depend on the relative measurements, as I mentioned, the micro, uh, microwave reader, the LiDAR, and also the optical sensors to achieve the automatic docking. So, so they also mentioned about the inclination 41 degrees and they also mentioned about the route parameters. Mm -hmm. The route parameters is for the vehicle to maneuver and based on that route parameters and all the uh, ground control team has to know that, that exact number mm -hmm. uh, to, to start to, to know where to start with. So that's uh, all the, the report. Which means, oh. basically means it's a good and successful launch. Oh, I was going to ask you that. Based on those data, how good of a launch was it? Well, <laughs> a so lot far, of jargon so good. going on. So far, so good, yeah. Beijing, <laughs> Honorable leaders, according to the report from the Beijing Aerospace Control Center, Long March 2 of Y-12 rocket has sent Shenzhou 12 manned spacecraft to the preset orbit. The solar panel unfolded functionally well and also successfully. We now declare the launch of Shenzhou 12 mission a complete success.
各方注意。